is Tuesday. It's the Black Watch. And I'm gonna get a couple things off my chest here because I can. And I have no problem with, with stating facts, as I always do. I always state facts. You know, if I don't know something properly, I definitely understand when people give it to me and be like, ah, you were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong. But when I have good intentions and I'm wrong, I might be just a little bit off. I'm not trying to tell a lie. I'm not trying to create a fallacy. I might just not be right in my data. But I don't start off on that vein. So it always comes from a good place, whether it be my heart or not. It comes from a good place. But uh, I'm not a presence to troll because once I get fed up, I'm going to kick back. I'm going to kick back in a way where you're going to be like, God damn, why did I get this motherfucker started? That's pretty much what it is. Morning, Kyra. How you doing? You know. It's like, I don't, I don't mind that people don't say anything when they come on my lives. You know, they think they're going to get outed. I don't know. I'm not that out-of-pocket motherfucker where I'm going to say something wrong about you. If you did some wrong shit back in the day, I'm not going to bring it out on this live. I only do that shit when it's purposeful. Like a motherfucker like Frank died. When a motherfucker stole my money, he had to get brought out over and over and over again. When his, when his ex asked me to get on there and, and, and tell her story so motherfuckers would know she was not complicit with that bullshit, I let it out. But y'all don't just see me up here just trying to rail motherfuckers every day because that's not what this is about. I didn't do this, get this started, so I could rail people out here doing things. Well, he don't do things like me, but people on my level. I bring the light shit that other people won't bring the light. I say things other people won't say. And it's all good. I'm good with it. I have no problem with that. That's that's a part of being a voice. That's a part of being vocal, being overt, being outspoken, whatever you want to call me. But see, what you can't call me is off code. I might go off tangent, but I'm never off code. See, I'm always for the right thing. I'm always for the people. I ain't never for no bullshit. And that's where I get people fucked up. You know, people want to get caught up in smoking hemp on camera. They want to get caught up, oh, I'm doing this and I'm driving on camera. Or they want to get caught up, uh, I'm cussing and smoking and driving on camera. Get caught up in the message, motherfucker, or don't watch the video. I put it to heading once I finish editing and everything. Look, there's profanity, there's hemp use, but there's facts. They talk about the profanity and they talk about the hemp smoke, but they won't talk about the facts. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that shit. And you got to understand, I'm where I'm at in this motherfucking video. When I hit stop, I will not be like this. A lot of motherfuckers think I go off somewhere and, and, and go smoke a whole bunch of crack or something and be all upset for the rest of the day. No, when I hit stop, it's over. I get on with my life until I make another video. I'm not all wrapped up in this bullshit like that. Mentally and spiritually, I'm here because this is what I do. But I don't get all fucked up. Like like a lot of these people be out here, they be so torn up. They go do they do coke before they get on. They they drink they drink when they when they on before they on. Pop pills, all kinds of shit. But don't nobody ever say nothing about that. Your favorite entertainer probably does cocaine before they do the performance that you love. But you don't say shit about that. But you wanna talk about me fucking smoking hemp? Get the fuck out of here. Catch the message or catch a brick. Strange shit. I got a, I got a thing with loyalty. When you're not loyal to me, and I and I know it's getting worse because I wasn't really like this. I let I let a lot of motherfuckers slide in my young years, in my teen years, 20s, 30s, 40s. I let a lot of motherfuckers slide. But one thing I said when I turned 50 last year was respect. I had to live the rest of my days respectfully. And I had to live the rest of my days 
making sure motherfuckers respected my family. If they didn't respect me and respect my people, we couldn't fuck with them no more. So I live a lot based on respect. And when you don't respect me and mine, I can't fuck with you no more. So a little tidbit on respect. <clears throat> Matthew Stafford, who was just released, traded or whatever they did, played several years for the Lions, what, nine, 10 years? I don't know, 11, maybe more. He played for the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are owned by the Fords. What hospital does everybody go to for the Detroit Lions? I mean, hell, I used to have consultation with, with, with surgeons and doctors that worked on the Detroit Lions linemen because I was so big that they couldn't just give me to a regular doctor. They had to give me to somebody. So they gave me to the sports medicine guy. And he was uh, one of the Detroit Lions doctors at Henry Ford. At Henry Ford. Why? Because Henry Ford is related to the Fords that own the Detroit Lions. Well, right before I just walked out of my spot, I just was watching a commercial of Matthew Stafford and his wife, who I won't ever call her name again with her racist ass, sitting doing a St. Joe commercial. Now, this is when he played for the Lions, obviously. I'm not sure exactly how this shit even rolled. You play for the Lions, who are owned by the Fords. They have Henry Ford Hospital. Ford gives you trucks and, and cars and all kinds of shit. You do all this shit for Henry Ford for the Lions because Henry Ford shit is all over Ford Field. But you went and had your babies in St. Joe? How did you have your babies in St. Joe? Where's the loyalty there? And that's just some, some little shit what I was thinking about. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But I'm like, how they had they been? You trying to tell me the Henry Ford Hospital, Henry Ford Medical Center, whatever, Henry Ford Health System is what it's called. They didn't have better doctors than St. Joe? I mean, world renowned. And you make a commercial endorsing another hospital? Yeah, maybe that's why Matthew needed to go. Maybe, I mean, I know he played hard. I know he did this and did that, but whatever. No loyalty. So where I am with this loyalty thing, and I, I put my own little verses together, me versus the trolls. You might not be able to see that. I don't know if you can see all that shit till it till it finishes, you know. But yeah, I put a little something up there. You know, I, I haven't have actually watched the whole Earth, Wind, and Fire Isley Brothers versus because I I really can't fuck with Steve Harvey right now. He's just he's just too much. He's just too much. I go back to when he when he had a joke and he was like, I love white people. You know. I think when you get there, when you get there, when you actually, I love white people. Eh, you know, come on, dog. We know you're trying to get them crossover dollars, and I get it. I totally get it. I never knock a motherfucker for trying to get his bag, unless he's trying to get his bag unjustifiably. And Steve ain't been trying to get a bag unjustifiably. He ain't hurt nobody doing what he do. He just, he just go a little wrong somewhere. You know, I love that old Steve Harvey. I love that Steve Harvey, who was unapologi unapologetically for his people. Now he done crossed over. You know, now, now, he, now he's kind of like a, a black Johnny Carson type motherfucker, you know. He just, he just a middle of the road motherfucker, you know. And he get off a good one every now and then. But Steve used to be funny in and out, in and out. Steve was funny all day long. My brother Scott, what's going on, Scotty? Every time I see your name pop up, man, I just think of playing catch outside before our baseball games and shit. We play catch, be all in our uniforms and shit. You go jump in your car. I go jump in my car. Parents take it to the game. We meet back up and we, we play again. Some good days back in the day, man. Little League. That, that's some character building shit. It's character building. You ain't trying to become a professional athlete when you play the Little League. You are building character. You don't even know you're building character. But if you play baseball, football, basketball, run track, uh -uh, lacrosse, field hockey, tennis, golf, it don't matter what it is. Just be out there with some teammates. Your character is built. Your character is built. Has no choice. Boy, they killing them up here. They killing them up here in St. Francis. 
Ain't no motherfucking Chevys and Fords coming out of St. Francis right now. It was a Porsche Cayenne, a Escalade. I'm right, a Porsche, Porsche Cayenne's right behind me. A S Series. Ain't nobody broke going to St. Francis. They in school. They, they, all the kids go to school regular, you know. They in Ann Arbor, but they ain't Ann Arbor. That's the first time I ever seen the drop-off line, though. All imports look like a fucking auto show. Somebody got their reparations over at St. Francis. Yeah. Somebody pulled their bootstraps up over at St. Francis. Is what it is. So I'm rolling through these territories that I've dropped out before. So if I drop out, sorry, because this is kind of the way I got to go. Um, I'm heading to get my motherfucking coffee. So I got to go this way. There's really no other way for me to get there. But... Y'all yeah, made me a little, 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 little list, you know, of, of all the the troll tracks, and basically just, just, just took the Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Isley song and flipped that bitch around and made it for the trolls. You'll see it when it's all done, but it is what it is. People just want to talk shit. They want to talk shit just to talk shit. No meaning. Just talk shit. And when I started talking about this sidetrack thing, this sidetrack thing was deep to me because I spent a lot of money in that corridor. Sidetrack, Aubrey, Sticks, all kinds of shit through the years. Sidetrack will never get another motherfucking dollar of mine unless that bitch gets sold and I can have proof that the French family ain't got shit to do with it. Because I'll never go to Frenchies again. I'll never go to Sidetrack again. Now, I know Aubrey's is owned by the family, and they say the family is not like her, but they do have some business practices that are not becoming. So, for the time being, I'm staying off that shit. No Aubrey's, no Sticks, no Frenchies, no Sidekick. Y'all can do what you want to do, and I know you're going to do what you want to do, because you don't know how to stand for nothing any goddamn way. You can't unify for anything. So it don't even matter. You get out here in these Black Lives Matter marches and get to doing your cha-cha slide, blocking up the motherfucking intersection at Hogback and Washington like you're doing something. But you and then your motherfuckers go right to Depot Town and get you an Impossible Burger. Fuck y'all. That's what I got to say about that. Fuck y'all. You don't know how to unify for the right thing. You talking about Black Lives Matter. Do you know how black people are treated at sidetrack? When I pull this bitch over, I'm going to read some shit I do read, bitch. See, I don't just spit all this shit off my dome. I'm going to read you some shit. Actual, factual text. Shit that's been going on at the place where you eat your impossible burger. Motherfuckers be vegan for an hour. Man, I had that impossible burger. Okay. But you was eating chitlins at Christmas. So what you saying? Fuck, I don't give a fuck about you eating no goddamn impossible burger. Shit. And where are you getting it from? Especially when you're buying it from a bigot. I would have to call her a racist because she does have enough power to actually change people's lives. She actually does. I heard some crazy shit. So basically, she brought up a whole bunch of buildings around that area, down there in Depot Town near it. And what she does is she renovates them and makes them into apartments. We're talking about Linda French. We're talking about the person that owns Sidetrack, family member to Aubrey, Sticks, Frenchies, all that shit. That's all the same people. Linda French. She bought up some buildings, renovated the motherfuckers, and who she likes to rent them out to is her employees. So then she got you in the pocket and she got you where you sleep. It's kind of hard to walk away from that opportunity. Like, literally. You quit the job, she gonna fuck you up with the residence. You quit the residence, she gonna fuck you up with the job. You let somebody control your life like that, you a fucking fool. You are a fucking fool. Besides that, now your boss knows what you do 24 hours a day. Because she owns where you live. Who does that shit? Who goes and fucking rents a place from the person that they work for? So I'm 
working for money and you paying me that money and I'm giving you that money right back in rent. So she really never loses the money. She never, ever loses the money. I don't know if I'm crooked or not. I mean, I'm not crooked. My camera was crooked, but it looked like, it feels like it's crooked. If I am, I am. You don't need to be looking at me anyway. I'm not giving you much to look at, but I'm giving you some shit to listen to, but y'all don't even want to listen to that. You want to pay attention to the smoke. You want to pay attention to the profanity. You want to pay attention to them doing both of those when I'm driving. You dumb motherfuckers. The whole world's going around you. <coughs> you want to pay attention to trivial shit. <coughs> so yeah. She's been, she's been like this for years. She's been like this for years. 40 years she's owned this business. Do you know how many lives that she's directly and indirectly affected over 40 years having a mentality like she has? I mean, this is Jamina Crow. It's Jim Crow's sister. Real shit. It's Jamina. She does shit on purpose to oppress people. She does shit. She talks shit about people. See, here's the thing. A black person says the same thing about a white person. Hell, even another black person. They're getting railed. Then you get a person that's not black or white that says some shit like that about a white person. Okay. But she can say it. Why? With full impunity. Why? Without any repercussions. Why? Because she is white. And she got money. I mean, we know she got money. She's been hosting all them Debbie Dingle campaign situations. We digging into that right now, too. I want to know, I want to know why Debbie Dingle is close to somebody like this. Debbie Dingle is supposed to be for the people. Linda French is not for the people. Where is the connection there? They're both blonde. I don't think they're really blind anymore. They're too old just to be blind. I think I think they're getting that shit bleached now. Doesn't look like it's a bad line today, Bucks. All right. Somebody dropped some shit off of a truck. Ain't nobody picked it up. Pittsville Township ain't what it used to be, I tell you. So, yeah, there's a problem. There's a problem in Depot Town. And it's not going to go away until Sidetrack is gone. I mean, I've heard countless stories at this point. I've seen post, text, emails, all kinds of shit. Her directly connected to it. Sometimes she's right in the thread. Hey, see how long this Starbucks line is. Make sure my shit is together. I'm going to read some of this shit. Absolutely. I got my shit in order here. <clears throat> okay, yep, I got enough there and got my tip. All right, all I got to do is get my mask ready. So, yeah. Linda French is not a good person. And anybody that endorses Linda French, you got to know where they're at. You got to know where they're at. Much love to my lady Ray. She, she got some black disposable surgeon masks. Because you know I wear all them black ones. So she got some black ones. You know, versus the blue. Everybody wear the blue ones and shit. But she got the black ones. Much love. That's beautiful. Oh, Latunji, what's going on, my brother? I didn't see you dip in there. doing what I do, bro. All right. So yeah, let me get back to this shit she, that, that she, oh my God. It's detrimental. This is when she, she had a black server, a brother on the floor. I, I'm up at the window. Hold on one quick sec. My fault. They going faster than I thought.
All right, can I get a hot venti mocha, non-dairy with coconut milk, an extra shot, four Splenda, no whipped cream, stirred. That's it. All right, we'll be up at the window for 694. Thank you. Well, when they train him, they train me all sounding like, I don't know if she knew or she'd been here before. She didn't ask, she didn't stutter, she didn't like going too fast, so she's either experienced and from another spot, or I just don't recognize her voice. Maybe I'm focused on some other shit right now. Let me get focused on that little tip. So. Says she was absolutely horrible to him. She actually said, starve him out on the schedule because we know black men have a whole bunch of kids and they are high, high risk for bringing COVID to the side track. That's what she said. This is Linda French herself. This is actually her post. I have an interview with it's a person's name on Friday. Hold on one second. This shit gonna blow your mind. How you doing? Good. There's a gratuity here. That's the important part. Let's see. Um, there we go. Yeah. Not a problem. You got. You, I know you don't have the. Uh, you don't have the uh, stoppers. But do you have the little the little stickers? You have like a strip of them. Like I get like four or five of them in a strip. Okay. Yeah. I just ran out of my last one. Yeah. So yeah, man. She said that out of pocket shit. Then she was like, "I have an interview with a certain person's name," and they were like, "Okay, do you want me to make a final call on anything?" Or there was a guy who was meeting with you, and I'm not sure about what you think. He's black. When is he meeting me? I gave him your number to call. Real shit. She didn't want to talk to the person because they were black. I don't want to. Yeah, just if you can give me a strip of like three of them really? within a few days, you probably you probably have the other ones. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure. I, yeah. I've been out for a little while. So yeah. I'm How you doing? I don't really know. Good. Yeah. Not a problem. Appreciate you. That is me. Thank you. Have a great day. You guys be safe. Thanks. All right. Feel a little bit better about transaction because it wasn't the person who took my order. And he didn't make it. I know he's experienced. He knows me. But then the person who walked up and was like, hey, Shannon, that's, that's good. I like that. I appreciate that. I know she made the coffee. She was like, okay, I know how to make it. Because that's what they do. They be in there like, I know how to make this cup. Because people be hearing all them different ingredients and shit. Yeah. She didn't want to deal with the person because they were black. So here's the other thing. And I'm just pulling over just so I can read this shit crazy shit also they had a, posted a picture of an Asian person right at the beginning of the pandemic which was a complete poor taste and pretty racist seeing as I'm sure there were plenty of other stock photos they could have picked so I'll never get uh, get over when Linda called us all together to make an announcement that she had hired an Asian guy Guess what, everyone? We hired an Oriental. Now, this is the this is the owner of Sidetrack. She's probably she's probably the worst person to actually own this type of business, obviously. But she's privileged and she's white and she's owned it for forty years and never never been kicked back. So, without social media, without some type of presence to where this message could get out. This type of shit's been going on for 40 years. She said, I, ho I hired an Oriental. I know people call Asian people Orientals all the time. 
It's wrong. It's politically incorrect. Da 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 da. That's what we knew them as. You know, when we were younger, they would say Oriental. But she said that after posting the picture at the beginning of COVID with the Asian person, you know the connotation there. I mean, other quotes here by her. I don't want another black person behind the bar. Stop hiring blacks and Mexican people. A monkey could do your job. This is shit like that's on Facebook, whatever. But now it's on IG. I've already put the, the, the link of IG in there so y'all can go look at his boycott sidetrack. All the racist shit. The big thing has really come up about the money. The way she's basically shading people for their money. You know, not paying people properly, making people work off the clock, making people work in non tippable positions. You know, She's a bad business person. She needs to be out of business. She needs to be out of that business. She wants to go do another business somewhere else. She just shouldn't be able to have that business in Depot Town anymore. That's just where I'm at. Now, I know enough people won't stand with me personally, but hopefully they'll stand with Sidetrack. Hopefully they'll stay, or not Sidetrack, but Sidetrack former employees. So, so they can get their justice. I'm not really worried about a person standing with me. I'm just the voice. I'm just the vessel that puts it out here. I don't really give a fuck if you stand with me because I'm not going to march. I'm not going to protest. I've already talked to the people who organize a lot of that shit for this. This is what I do. And we're working on something now. And we want victims, former victims, to come forward. Even patrons who have witnessed some shit. I just got told about her dragging a server across the floor by her face to her table and gotten her ass right in front of the client. I mean, just, she grabbed her face. That's, that's physical assault on the floor, walked her across the floor and gave it to her. Now this must've been one of them people that not only worked for her, she must've been renting an apartment. She must've owed her money. Because you grab somebody by the face in front of a room full of people, nah, I'd have folded my apron right on up and said, I think I'm done here. And start taking pictures all around that dining room. Catching all the people that was in there. Because they all witnesses now. They all witnesses. And I'm going home and I'm calling an attorney. Well, she probably was young. She should have probably called her daddy. Called her mama. Call her mama first. Tell her that Linda did it. Her mama might go up there and get in Linda's ass. I don't know if Linda French is married. Because if Linda French is married, then her, call her daddy. And he can go up there and get in Linda French's husband's ass. But I don't ever hear about her husband. I only ever hear about her daughter, Jessica. Who she is a racist in training. Yeah, she got some fucked up ways too. Like I said, I don't need you to stand with me. You know, I'm not the protester. I'm not the organizer of all this shit. But what I am is I'm down with these motherfuckers because they have been wronged. They have been wronged. When you don't pay a person and you work them, you're enslaving them. They have been enslaved. They have been the victims of indentured servitude because she pays them a wage that's not adequate to what they're supposed to do. Oh, and if they're renting a place from her, wow, it's kind of like sharecropping, you know? I give you a place to stay, I give you a way to earn, and then I just mistreat the fuck out of you. That sounds like sharecropping. Oh, yeah. And this is all going on and nobody's saying anything about it. You got a couple people out here with a class action lawsuit, but that's based on the wages. That's not based on the detriment all the racism. Let's see if I can find some more shit. Oh, man. This brother had this hat on. This is March 7th. He had his hat on and it said, I'm black. He was like, 
Oh, you don't choose to be black. I just got lucky. They had a problem when they're wearing that hat. He works in the prep kitchen. He's not on the floor. He was one of the employees that when she gathered up all the Asians, no, I'm sorry, not Asians, Hispanics and black employees and put them on the back porch, the back porch, the, the, the patio. It might as well have been a pen. It's, it's all fenced in there. She put them in there, locked them in there and turned the camera on and said, y'all need to talk about how well you like working at sidetrack. Only the black and, and Hispanic employees. Only the black and Hispanic employees. She's like, you need to show how grateful you are to be here. Hispanics and blacks on the patio, in the pen. Yeah. So you had to give you a little testimonial. How happy you were to be there. How thankful you were to lend a French for the opportunity. This is an Ypsilanti, man. They ain't like this shit's in Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Florida, Texas. This is Ypsilanti. Appreciate you, bro. I'm only going to speak the truth. And I'll speak it for the people who can't speak it. See, there's a lot of people can't speak up now. They got litigation. They can't say shit now. Then there's other people who just won't speak up because they're so traumatized. And like I said, we're working with some other people who are going to be able to speak up and we're going to get them and we're going to collect them and we're going to make it right. We're going to make it right for them. They'll be able to get their story out in its totality. We're not cutting nobody off. Won't be no character limit. What happened to you at Sidetrack? Go. What up, Perk? That's what we want to know. Did you work at Sidetrack? Yes. What happened? Go. That's where we're at with it. But I can't stay out here long, man. I got some shit I got to get doing. Um. Oh. What's up with all the celebrities giving $50,000 to the Asians? Ain't no problem with donating. You donate what you want to donate. But why they all giving 50000 All of them. Now Jeezy and Jenny Mae done gave 50000 to the Asians. Has Jeezy given any money to the blacks for stop black hate? He given money to the Asians for stop Asian hate. But has he given any money to the blacks for stopping black hate? Hmm? Then I heard about Megan the mayor. She gave 50000 to stop Asian hate. Did she give any to stop black hate? Did the mayor do that? Everybody wants to stop Asian hate as we should. We should definitely stop Asian hate. Brother Joe, I already told you good people find good people with the help of good people. And you was a good person to put us together. We good on it. We gonna stay on this shit. But yeah, the $50,000, I mean, 50 is it. They, they just get 50, get 50. Megan gave 50. I wonder if Cardi B gave 50. But I don't see nobody giving 50 to black hate. Just Asian hate. Why? Why are all these black people giving money to Asians, but they're not giving it to black people? We can only see y'all when y'all show up at the, at the chicken and waffles restaurants in the hood. Huh? We can only see Jeezy when he rolling down Campbellton. Huh? See, Jeezy is problematic anyway. 
because he's been compromised. And it's okay because he's in love. I get it. Love make you do some dumb shit. Being in love will make you do some dumb motherfucking shit. And Jeezy's in love with a woman who believes that Asians are superior and blacks are inferior. She believes that Asians should sell, sell, sell and Asians, I'm sorry, Asians should sell, sell, sell and blacks should buy, buy, buy. Blacks shouldn't own shit in their own neighborhood or in Asian neighborhoods. That's Jeezy's wife. Jeezy's wife said that. She was like, we need Asians to own. You know what? God damn it. See, some of y'all don't be hearing some of my shit. Some of y'all don't heard this already. Some of y'all don't heard this already. But most of y'all ain't heard that. I'm going to let you hear it. Watch this. It's some crazy shit. She just believes that black people should be consumers. And we know black people are mostly consumers. There's very few entrepreneurs compared to the way we buy shit versus the way we sell shit. Okay? And Asians sell up sell black people a lot of shit. They don't just sell us Chinese food. We just ain't hooked on fried rice. We go to the party stores, we go to the beauty supplies. We go to grocery stores owned by Asian folk. Now, that's okay. Cuz that's what they do. We need to buy shit. But when you say that all we should be doing is buying shit, now I got a problem with you. I got a problem with you. So this is what young Jeezy's wife said, Jenny May. Well, I guess she's Jenny Jeezy now. Listen up. This is what she believes. Whoever watches the real, listen to this real shit. You don't go into a black neighborhood without seeing Asian businesses or restaurants or, or liquor store owners and vice versa. You don't go into Asian neighborhoods without seeing black customers and, and, and black clients that keep our keep our businesses alive. And did you catch that? It came kind of quick. Let's do it again. You don't go into a black neighborhood without seeing Asian businesses or restaurants or, or liquor store owners and vice versa. You don't go into Asian neighborhoods without seeing black customers and, and, and black clients that keep our keep our businesses alive. And you don't go into black neighborhoods without seeing Asian businesses. She admitted that. And I've already said there ain't nothing wrong with that. You want to run a business in a black neighborhood? Run a business. Run a business. But why does that mean we shouldn't run business? Why does that mean we should just come to your business? Then you go to the Asian neighborhoods and they say that black people should just come to the Asian neighborhoods and buy too. They say nothing, she didn't say nothing about blacks being entrepreneurs. I don't think you're hearing me. This is what they think of you. You don't go into a black neighborhood without seeing Asian businesses or restaurants or, or liquor store owners and vice versa. You don't go into Asian neighborhoods without seeing black customers and, and, and black clients that keep our keep our businesses alive. And Come on, man. I mean, I can't fault her for being truthful. I can't fault her for being honest. She's being dead ass honest. It's the way it is. You go into the black neighborhoods, you're gonna see Asian owned businesses. You may see a black owned business or two, but a vast amount of the businesses that are doing the major bread are Asians or Middle Easterns. And you go into the Asian neighborhood, it ain't like black people say, you know what's going over? There's a lot of Asians over there. They'll they'll like our product. No, 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 no. What have you seen Asians in droves in black restaurants? When you see Asian rent out a room. When you see Asians rent out a room in a black restaurant, a black you ever seen an Asian party in Southern Fires? 
You ever seen that? You don't see that shit. She's like, we need to keep our businesses alive and you niggas need to keep buying shit. Ain't that right, Jeezy? Jeezy wrote that check for 50 G's. He wrote that check. Stop Asian hate. What about us, young Jeezy? I'm, just, I'm about to drop another CD for y'all niggas to buy. So I can make more money so we can stop Asian hate. That's what young Jeezy's doing. He's taking a black dollar and going to help oppressed Asians. I know he's got white fans. Probably got more white fans than got black fans now. Because black people gone to the, the whole other thing. I mean, I listen to Young Jeezy, but I'm not buying any of his new shit. I'm still listening to fucking Thug Motivation. I don't mind he's made new shit. I've listened to it and liked it, but I, you know. You don't get me like that. So, understanding that people are out here caping for Asians and ain't nobody caping for black folks, even black folks. Ken Jong, the guy that plays the crazy little motherfucker in, uh, in uh, Hangover. You know, he's got the one uh, meme where he's looking at the little piece of paper squinting and shit. Ken Jong, he gave $50,000 to the Asians. I don't know why $50,000 is the number, but the way I look at it, it must be a code. It must be a code. Give 50. Don't, no need to try to outshine each other. We all just give 50. Everybody give 50, give 50, give 50. All celebrities been given $50,000. What is that about? What's that all about? They all giving 50. Hell, you had some Asian person right off the rip when the uh, Atlanta thing happened. They right off the rip gave like 900,000. I don't know where they, why 900, why not a million? Why not 800? Maybe a million to get audited, I don't know. They gave $900,000. Ken Jong gave 10,000 to each family, Asian family. Ain't say nothing about the Hispanic people that got killed. You know, stop, don't stop Latino hate. He gave the money to the Asian family that was affected. What about the Hispanic family that was affected? What about the American uh, family that was affected? He just gave it to the Asian families. This shit's all documented, man. This is going to the five, fa five Asian families. Hey, uh, Hispanics over here like, we lost somebody too. White people's like, we, we lost somebody too. Like, no, nah, it's going to the Asians. Okay. Okay. This is why celebrities make bad activists. Because they're not going to act on the people who really, really need it. I'm not saying Asians ain't getting fucked up right now. But black people have been getting fucked up for the last 402 years. Potato, potato. I get it. Potato, potato. I know they had the shit with the fucking concentration camps. Got paid. They got some reparations. Black people ain't got shit. Black people can't even get an executive order just for them. If black people are in the executive order, then it's for people of color, then it's for minorities, then it's for this, for this. Not for black Americans, not for descendants of slavery, not for descendants of freedmen. We can't get shit to ourselves. We got to share all our lunch with everybody. And these motherfuckers get to come and get lunch for themselves. I told you what's happening in San Diego. They keeping San Diego kids, American kids on the bench and bringing in migrant kids, illegal kids and putting them in classrooms. We're going to let y'all go to school. But the kids who did go to this school, they can do on online learning at home. Why don't you throw the migrants the iPads 
You got them in a spot anyway already. Throw them the iPads and teach them there. Let the American kids get back to school. Why are you putting the migrants in the classrooms and the, and, and the American kids, why are they on the bench? Why are they on the bench? Coming in getting resources. You know what? They put the kids in school. They're working to get the parents jobs. They're working to get them housing. They're working to get them citizenship. What's that going to do? That's going to push more black people to the bottom. Because you just came in and got residency. Who's the most homeless people in, in the country? Uh, per capita. Um, you don't came in and got a job. Who's the most unemployed in the country? Per capita. Um, and who has the lowest level of education in the country? So you don't came in and gave them education, housing, and jobs. When you got black people sitting up here, can't get none of them. Not can't go one out of three. One out of three. You know, you go one out of three, you can go to the Hall of Fame in Major League Baseball. You bat 33-33, you probably go into the Hall. They giving the motherfuckers three out of three. And if you go three out of three, how can you not be great? How can you not be great? If I give you three chances, housing, jobs, and education, and I don't give that to the people over here, whose people been over here because these people built the country, how am I not going to make you greater than them? We are a permanent bottom cast. Been telling y'all that. Y'all don't want to understand that though. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. It is what it's going to be. I'm getting that today. So they make a, yep. Solid. Whoa. Sorry, I was left to post about my grandson. He said he likes science. He likes doing experiments. And then a brother just put up here, if they make a kid on Amazon, has 30 plus experiments. That's God. That is God. Yeah, man. So, I'm going to get on up out of here. Well, fuck sidetrack, man. And like I said, for me, I don't need to eat an Aubrey's. I don't need to eat a Frenchie's or sticks. I don't need to do nothing there. I don't need to do no business down there with that whole family. I'm good. I'm good. But y'all need to check yourselves. If you're going to go patronize a restaurant like that with a proprietor who is detrimental to society. See, I didn't say she was doing all this shit against black people. Not even Asian people. Not even Hispanic people. She oppresses her own people. The two people that's got the lawsuit is white. They white. Brother Ramon. So, understand, when I go off tangent, and this is once again for the trolls. What's that other motherfucker's name? Uh, Morning Star Sunlight. Whatever the fuck his name is. He trolling me yesterday because I said something about a brother's afro. I liked the way he had it picked out. What you doing commenting on people's hair? Huh? You watched my video long enough to hear that? It was like the first 45 seconds, but yeah. You didn't gather nothing else from the message other than me giving a brother a compliment of on the way his natural was looking? Because at first he started trolling me saying I was talking about women's hair. Y'all know me. I rarely talk about women's hair. It's a sensitive subject. Now, if her shit's fucked up, I might go at her. I might go at her. Because if it's fucked up purposely, I might go at her. Now, if it's fucked up and, you know, she can't do nothing about it, you don't talk about nobody's detriment. You don't talk about nobody's shortcoming. But if she did this shit and made it fucked up, oh, yeah, she catching it. 
But he was like, yeah, you talking about women's hair? I'm like, what females? What hair? What, what, what did I talk about women? Because I knew I had him then. I knew I had him. He was walking into the hole. He didn't even realize it. I was like, if this motherfucker responds to this, that's when I clap on his ass. You said it at the beginning of the video. Oh, when I was talking about the brother, I never said anything about a woman. So if you're going to troll, motherfucker, troll the right way. Don't troll with the wrong gender, bitch. Oh, so what are you doing? Comment on, no, then he want to flip it. Now I can't, I can't comment on the female's afro. Can't comment on the brother's afro. Come on, man. Can't talk about my sisters or my brothers. Who can I talk about? What are you, what are you talking about? Trans? Early morning sun star? Get the fuck out of here, nigga. And the old chick from Ipsy, the old chick who tried to tell me about not cussing, I leave the video up when I didn't cuss. She ain't put a comment up yet. She only caught the fact that I cussed. She didn't catch the message. And she didn't want to say anything else other than the fact I couldn't listen because you were cussing. Bitch, please. Get the fuck out of here. Then I catch her comment with somebody else cussing at somebody on my post. Calling people little shits and all kinds of stuff. So you can cuss, but I can't cuss. Oh, I mean, I'm an old black motherfucker. She an old white motherfucker. So an old white motherfucker can cuss, but an old black motherfucker can't cuss. Bitch, if you don't go somewhere and sit down, get you two tablespoons of Geritol, and leave me the fuck alone. Betty. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I appreciate your recognition, brother. I appreciate that. These motherfuckers can't knock me down. They wish they, you know what? No, they don't. They, they, they think they want to knock me down, but they really don't because they're in for that type of fight. They just like to throw their little comment in and go on to the next post. Nah, bitch. I'm going to make you come back. I'm not sure why you would even want to listen to this. You know what I bring. You know where I stand. Why would you want to bring me foolishness? All day. Outside of a little window between like 11 and 12.30. Other than that, I got all day, bruh. All day. They can say what they want to say. Do what they want to do. But I got all day, today. Except for that little window of time. Yeah. Fuck with me. I'd love to see our people come together. And help these people that have been wrong down in Depot Town. But now, nah, we ain't gonna worry about that. We just gonna get our outfit ready for the ceremony for the Black Lives Matter mural downtown Ipsy. We ain't gonna worry about putting a bad business out of business downtown. Or I'm sorry, Depot Town. But we'll concern ourselves with a mural that ain't going to move the needle for black Americans one bit. One bit. What up, Doe? I see we got a few brothers in here, like brother brothers, you know. I mean, black brothers, you know. I mean, I got a white brother and I had Scott in here. I saw him earlier. You know, and he's my brother for real. You know, I, he just light-skinned it, that's all. Black men, we are, we are in a really precarious time. And the one thing that we have to do is we have to stand on our square. We got to stand on our square firmly for our people. We all we got in this bitch. That's all they can do, Brother Daryl. Suck a dick up to your hiccup. And see, I usually don't say suck a dick up to your hiccup. I didn't tell them to suck a dick twice. Good morning, Sister Angela. Jeff, I don't know why I didn't throw you in there as much as I didn't talk to you just on this video. You absolutely, you're light-skinned. That's all. 
that's all. See, I know when I've got my brothers out here, and I know when I got motherfuckers who just, you know, trolling. That's why I made my troll verses. And I'm going to get on up out of here. This is my me versus the trolls. And I took the songs from the Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Everybody love for the love, for the lover in you. For the lover in you. Isley Brothers, everybody love that song. So I had to make for the troll in you. And then Earth, Wind, and Fire, everybody loved after the love is gone. Yeah. I had to make after the troll is gone. And one of my favorite songs, because Ernie, Ernie is all up in this one. Groove with you. Groove with you is the shit for the Isleys. It was a shit for me many a time. Had to make troll with you. We can't do groove with you because we're talking about the trolls. So we do troll with you. And can't hide love. Shit. Can't hide love. I'll tell you what. You can't hide nothing. You put that on. You can't hide nothing. If you put that on. Everything popping out when you put can't hide love on. Everything popping out. You can't hide nothing. So I had to make can't hide trolls. Make me say it again, girl. Shit. Make me say it again. And I didn't put all of them on here. I didn't have time to, you know, maybe I'll add some more songs after. So I couldn't say, make me say it again, girl, because I ain't talking to no girl. Is that right? But I couldn't say, make me say it again, girl. I had to say, make me say it again, troll. And then I wrapped it up on this one. And I, I'll add some songs to it. I had more. I just, I typed too slow. Fat fingers. The last song I ended was an upbeat song. I love Earth, Wind & Fire's dance song. And the best dance song to me was Boogie Wonderland. But I couldn't make Boogie Wonderland because we're talking about trolls. I had to make Trolley Wonderland. Trolley Wonderland. Ha! Ha! Oh, you know what? We can change that. Trolley Wonderland. Hey! Hey! There you go. There's the lyric. I just made a new hook for Boogie Wonderland troll style. We're going to do the troll and screwed mixed. Target must be getting a new sign. They just got a little, little plastic sign up there. They must be getting a new sign. Wonder what happened with their old sign. It was just Target. Maybe it faded or something. See, that's what big business do. They see their sign fade and they go get a new one. We'll leave that plastic motherfucker, that plastic banner and shit. Y'all motherfuckers get y'all business banners and shit from OPO. Go down to uh, Print Giants, I think is his name. Go get your shit from OPO. But when you're ready to upgrade to a real sign, go back, get with him and his people, and get you some lights. Don't keep that motherfucking banner in front of your business for nine, ten years. That banner get all weathered and shit. Get you a lighted sign. You running a business. Yes, I'm trolling the business owners who all they do is put up a banner for their sign. That's not a real sign. That's a temporary sign. But y'all keep it up for five years if you stay in business that long. Most businesses done 12 to 18 months. Make sure y'all get over there to Sharshi. Get over there to Sharshi on Rosenville Road. Stop going to these big box beauty supply stores. If she don't have what you need, tell her what you need. Let her get it. More suggestions, more revenue. She can buy on a better space. And we can put these other motherfuckers out of business. Now, I'm not saying necessarily put the Asian shops out of business. But, but, you might not be able to take their whole dollar. But maybe you can cut them down to about 72 cent. See, if you can get 28 cent of the Asian dollar in the beauty market, you're making some bread because the Asians make all the money. And if you can get 28% off of a dollar and then you make what you're getting, you can do well. It's just business. It ain't personal, B. 
Yep. But nobody thinks that way. They just go where they go, shop where they shop, and then be like, I wonder why that business didn't succeed. Because you didn't go patronize the motherfucker, bitch. Number one reason black businesses failed. Because your ass didn't go. We already know we undercapitalize in most cases. And if we undercapitalize, that means the business isn't stable. So the way to stabilize the business is to patronize it. Patronize, stabilize, because we're capitalized. But you'll wait till they go out of business and be like, oh man, I wonder why they didn't make it. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Fuck out of here. But yeah, to everybody that watches this video, <clears throat> you got you got pretty much the way I bring it. I had to talk about the people that it's not that I don't like them. I just don't like what they bring to the table on my post. They don't even really be watching the post. They see the caption, watch a couple minutes, and then be like, "Oh, eh, 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 whatever." Okay. So I had to talk about them, but I got the message out. It's all about the message with me. Yes, I do go off tangent. I do, but I never go off code. Therefore, you should stick with me and see what the fuck I'm bringing. Now, I know I'm about to get choppy here because it's a fucked up intersection that I'm crossing and it just happens. So, y'all be good today. I'll probably get back at you. I gotta go, gotta go do something. I just had a short window of time today. I got a short window of time that I can't do nothing. Well, I'll be doing something, but I won't be doing this. And then after that, I already got two things to talk about already. Just couldn't talk about him this morning. So, yeah. Y'all be good out here. I mean, like, really, really good. Take care of each other. Because if not, we fucked up. That's the way it is. It's no gray area anymore. I'm not going to fucking sugarcoat this shit anymore. If we're not going to take care of one another, we're fucked up. How about that? Like it or lump it. Wasn't love.